Kihana says, do we have Canva at TCC already? You might be thinking about Canvas. Canvas is the LMS. Canva is um, kind of like a Photoshop light. Um, yes, <laughs> which is what you just said. So yeah, um, I like Canva. I like Canvas, which I hear we're going to get. Um, I really hope so. That's kind of the whispers and murmurs that I've heard um, around. Um, and so hopefully that'll be rolling out. I don't know if it's going to be rolling out next fall, probably, um, in all honesty, um, but it should be really fun. I really prefer Canvas uh, to Blackboard, and I'll be doing a lot more of that um, material to help you guys get up to speed on Canvas. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. So adding visual interest to your course. So the first thing I want to do is um, I want you to take to the chat and answer this question. What do you think of when you hear the term graphic design? So just go ahead and dip into the chat and let me know what do you think of when you hear the term graphic design? And then we'll review your responses. good responses. So I'm going to go ahead and read those off. So I love that. Who was it? Gandalf said cool stuff. You're right, Gandalf. Um, we've got creative, the look of a site. So this could be related to websites, how the course looks visually. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Kiana says mad Photoshop skills, mad web, app, web apps. Belinda says visual appeal, commercial design. We've got visual interest, visual art, marketing, brochures, logos. Um, yeah, anything that kind of makes text more appealing to people, visuals. Um, yeah, so you are all correct in this. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to break down the principles of graphic design. I'll kind of uh, test you on what those are. Um, and that's going to be the way through which I'm going to make you better graphic designers for your classes. Because you don't need to be a, a Photoshop whiz um, in order to be a graphic designer. In fact, you could, you know, have Photoshop skills and still design pretty crappy stuff. Um, for a long time, I thought it was just the software. <laughs> when people would come up with stuff, I'd be like, oh man, it's because they have access to, you know, Illustrator and all of that stuff. But I've seen people use the same tools I use and the design isn't that great. And I was like, whoa, it's these principles of design that are really important when it comes to designing, thing vis designing things visually, especially for your classes. So I want to talk about crappy design, okay? So like I said, you don't have to be a graphic designer to create well-designed materials. You just have to remember the four elements of design or crap. So you've got contrast, which is where you make elements different to increase understanding, right? Um, we can all talk about this in terms of uh, film or photos, right? Whenever we're playing with photos on Instagram and we want to up that contrast to make, you know, um, you know, that picture of our puppy pop, um, that's what contrast is, right? So it's that contrast of one color against the background that's another color. And we'll talk a little bit about that. We also have repetition, okay? So with repetition, you want to repeat visual elements in order to create unity between those elements. And this could be related to font size, and it could be related to font face. Um, next, you have alignment which is where you want to place elements um, deliberately and rationally in order to improve clarity. And for me, this is making sure that everything is left aligned because it's easier to read. Um, centering something may look visually appealing to us, but if it's large blocks of text, it's going to be harder to read um, because we constantly, we want to go back to the, the end of the line to read, but if we're constantly having, if that position is constantly changing, it's going to be hard and it's going to be more work. Also, there's proximity, 
which is placing related items together to convey a relationship, okay? So if we group things together, those things belong together and are related. So go ahead and take to the chat, and I wanna ask you this, how does this graphic right here that we have explaining what crap is, how does it use crap in its design? And so I'll play some music while you guys are musing on that. You guys have some really good responses and you're even crit critiquing my design, which is fantastic as well you should. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about, so Julia Frank says that it uses repetition of contrast and of style. Um, and Meryl kind of clarifies this, that, this to say that it uses red letters to enforce that acronym, right? So we, right away, if we're kind of looking for this color, we can read crap all the way down. Um, uh, yes, Belinda, you're welcome. The, mu the music is awesome. <laughs> um, and then there's that alignment. So you remember the acronym. Um, and somebody said uh, that there's an issue here with my um, link because it's really hard to read. And that's because of contrast, right? We've got a pink background, but then we have like this kind of hot blue color on that pink background and it makes it much harder to read. So yeah, no, this is all really good. So it does use the principles of crap in order to create this visualization in order to make you think. Um, and it, it, good design is, is about making you think less. <laughs> good design is about making that transfer of the information um, as easy as possible, okay? And it's kind of like um, when you see good design, you don't really notice good design because it's doing its job. Whereas if it's bad, then that is something that really gets pointed out. It's almost like with CG. A lot of uh, the CG shots that you see in movies, if they're really good shots, you just don't notice them. <laughs> Whereas we all know what bad CG looks like. So it's the same thing with design. We know what bad design looks like, but we don't necessarily know what good design looks like. So with good design, you just want to remember those um, four design principles. And what's good about these design principles is if you follow them, you make your material more accessible because these are also things you have to think about with students who have disabilities. You know, maybe a student who has vision disabilities or, you know, who may be deaf. Um, when it comes to designing things, if you design for everyone, then you have a universality of design and the course just gets better altogether. So let's kind of investigate each of these elements of design a little bit more closely. So go ahead and tell me about contrast with this example. So go ahead and take to the chat and let me know um, what's going on in, with here in terms of contrast.
a lot of you guys are really hitting on it. Um, I think that Kihana said it best that it has terrible contrast. It's light gray on white, which makes the font very difficult to read. A lot of you guys were picking up on the same font for the headers, which is good because we're, the headers are the only things we can actually read. This is called low contrast um, font. Um, or this type of design is called low contrast. And it's something that I think a lot of companies um, might like to use because they're like, oh, it's minimalistic. And, you know, it, it looks cleaner because it's not overly cluttered and, and made, you know, distracted by color. But the thing is, functionally, it just fails because we can't read it. I, I, I can't read it, definitely, and I have 2020 vision. <laughs> um, so it's really, really difficult to read, um, as, as opposed to something like this, like Get Started has really good contrast, right? And so I can read that actually more than this information. So when you're thinking about contrast, you have to think about like how well is your text gonna read on that background if you're gonna have a background. Um, and so kind of thinking about that beforehand, it's you don't want to make it too difficult for your reader to actually read this text because it's going to cause things like eye strain, it's going to cause fatigue, and then your, your audience will be less likely to read it. So that's why contrast is really important because it's about increasing the readability of texts, especially if you have a visual disability. Okay, the next thing is repetition. So go ahead and look at this image and tell me what you think in terms of repetition. So take to the chat. have some interesting responses. So um, I was looking at, at uh, things that are repeating here. And so we have um, Belinda says font, the headings are the same, but also Jessica pointed out the word go. So we have this circle with the word, word go and kind of this lens flare here that gets repeated. Um, and we have a repetition of circles because of that. So we have the go button, the go, and then we have the circle around the woman and then we have the circle around um, the adorable pug dog that I just want to squeeze um, <laughs> to kind of create that sense of repetition. Um, lots of people are saying the circles and then Belinda hits it right on the head is the color scheme, right? So blue and orange color scheme, which I believe are complementary colors. Don't quote me. I mostly look up palettes online <laughs> or I look up like the hex palette online. So don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, so it's that repetition of color. We love repetition of color. I don't know. It's something about us as a species. We are really pleased by repetition and it just makes us feel really good. So if you're going to be making a document and maybe you're going to be using an image as a header, one quick way to create repetition is to put that image in something like Photoshop or maybe put it in paint, figure out what the colors are being used in that image, and then use that for your accent color for your headers. That's one really, really easy way to create repetition. So you guys are getting it. You guys are getting the repetition of the colors, the repetition of the shapes. Um, very good. All right, so let's talk about these two examples in terms of alignment. So when it comes to the, um, the, the design principle of alignment, what is going on with these two examples and which one is better than the other when it comes to alignment? So go ahead and take to the chat and let me know what you think. It is Crooked Grand Gandalf, I'm sorry. <laughs> these came from an old lecture I did on um, technical writing, wow, back when I was in grad school.
all have really different opinions. So a lot of you are saying that you actually prefer the one on the left. Whereas when it comes to alignment, remember we talked about um, the reason when you want to keep things left aligned is because it's easier for your eye to make that return. I think a lot of times we center things because we maybe don't know what to do with the text or maybe we're just uncomfortable with it being left aligned out there. Um, but get comfortable, get comfortable with things being left aligned because it's just much easier for the eye to follow um, as opposed to something being justified or something being right aligned. Um, so I think that's what's happening in the second image is that they took that information and they made it left aligned as opposed to center aligned. Um, yeah, Kiana got it right on the head. He's like, left aligned is easier to follow, but center aligned is prettier because of document balance. And I think it just it depends on you know, what is your purpose? And that's something that you have to determine uh, based on your audience. It, do you want this to be pretty or do you want it to be easier to read? And I think um, in our cases, we want it to be easier to read for students because then they're gonna call you and be like, why, you know, what about this, this, and this? And they're like, you're like, it's in the syllabus. And it's like, well, they didn't read it <laughs> or they didn't read whatever course document. Um, Dan Danelle says, are center justifications better for headings only? Even with headings, I do left align. I guess I'm just not afraid of left aligning things because um, I just I just try to kind of keep everything consistent. But I think as long as you're consistent with whatever it is you do, um, you know, that's just a design choice that you make. Okay, so let's talk about proximity. We talked about proximity being um, when things are grouped together, it creates relationships. So look at these two examples, the kind of before and after, and I want to get your thoughts on proximity. So go ahead and take to the chat and let me know what you think. song makes you move like people are looking at me funny Jessica don't let them don't let them you know mess with your groove like this is this is you this is you today get your groove on I need something to keep me awake um, <laughs> so okay so looking at your um, kind of comments on this um, so the one on the left has consistent spacing, but there's no headers, right? So it's like, if I'm looking for, I want to listen to the Santa Rosa players, there's nothing visually that's going to help me on the left, right? I have to read all of the text. And that's what graphic design does. It makes stuff easier to read. It makes it more accessible so I can go in and find the information that I need. Um, and it's similar with a student. If you have a course document or if you have, um, you know, any kind of course material that you want to pass on to the student, it's easier for them to scan, you know, to look for the information they need as opposed to just reading this huge document. And I think we do that every day, like even with our emails, we, we get emails from certain people, right, where it's just basically um, they're writing us the Iliad and the Odyssey, and it's like, just tell me what you want <laughs> in a couple of lines. And so that's what's happening with these two documents is we kind of have a, a large concentration of text in the left example and on the right what's happened they've actually grouped things together they've adjusted fonts they've selected a header font and then they've grouped information that's related so this information we have about the alexander string quartet and what they're playing and who's performing it's all grouped under under there so i can tell that this information is related to the alexander string quartet and i could tell this information is related to the santa rosa 
chamber players. So I don't have to waste my time <laughs> sifting through the information. I can just find the information that I need for the concert that I want to go to. Um, and so this is how you, one way that you use proximity to create unity um, of information. Um, so that's why we use headers. That's why we use um, different types of fonts. So a student can be able to scan a document and find the information that's relevant to them. Um, and I'll kind of end with these two examples. So I've got two syllabi here. They have the exact content, same word for word. Which one has better visual design? So use what you've learned so far. Crap, you know, con, uh, um, oh no, uh, con <laughs> I'm sorry, I was going to say context. Um, contrast, uh, repetition, alignment, and proximity to explain what's going on and to justify which of these is the better document. So go ahead and take to the chat and let me know what you think. on the head with all of these. So I'm going to kind of go through your responses. Um, so let's see. Oh, Belinda points out that the top right one has a shadow box, like maybe that's important information. See, that's one way that the uh, creator of this document is creating even more contrast, right? They've got this light gray box that draws attention to itself. And that's where you get the essential information, like your instructor, your, your last name is instructor, when your office hours are, where the class is going to meet, and your phone number, right? So that's one way to kind of create visual interest and also highlight some important information for your students. Most of you were talking about how um, the second document is better. Right, and you guys were able to really articulate why it's got that proximity and spacing. It's much more concise. Um, it has headings, groupings, contrast. Um, Danelle said the one on the right has more contrast with darker fonts, repeats those heading styles, uh, creates proximity with the headings and the box. So these are different ways that you. So so these are actually graphic design principles that are being used and that you now know and we didn't even touch Photoshop. Okay. So that's kind of what we're doing with graphic design in our, in our courses. And you can use these in when it comes to course documents or when it comes to visuals. So I'm going to kind of transition into visuals. Um, and I'm going to talk uh, a quick moment. Oh, uh, never mind. I forgot about this part. Um, when it comes to formatting documents, uh, you want to make sure Another way that you can kind of chunk out information is to use bulleted lists to break out information, chunking information into smaller paragraphs, which is what we just learned in terms of proximity, and then highlighting things with bold or italics. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to move into um, briefly before, I'm going to talk about Bitmojis, and then we're going to look at canva.com, and I'm going to show you how you can use these design principles in order to create a course banner for your course. So one way, I like to create visual interest in my course is to use a Bitmoji. So um, with Bitmoji, you download it on your phone, you create a Bitmoji version of yourself. You can pick the hair, you can pick your gender, you can pick your face shape, your body shape, and your clothes. And what's cool about that is once you have uh, the Bitmoji done, what you can do is, let me go ahead and, oh, I stopped sharing my screen. Um, let me go ahead and I meant to just exit my presentation. Uh, so here what I have, uh, I hope you can see it, is I've got a Bitmoji extension in my Chrome uh, browser 
that then allows me to use my Bitmoji in a number of ways. So I can look up different types of my Bitmoji. Oh, I really like this raccoon one. So you can copy it. And then I can do things like um, put it in the chat and send it to the rest of you. So what you would do is you would right click, save image as, um, I'll go ahead and save it to my downloads. And then I will go ahead and see if I can send it to everybody in the chat. I don't think I can. I think that chat is limited in that way. But I could, um, you know, take this from here. I can copy the raccoon. I think that would go better with the dumpster fire because raccoons are trash pandas. So you can do different things like that. Like you can use um, a Bitmoji for an occasion. You can use it for an assignment. It, it, it's very, very, uh, it's a very, very versatile tool. And I think especially when you're teaching classes online, we're not physically there for students. So for students, it could feel like really impersonal that, you know, okay, I know there's somebody on the other side of that screen, but I don't really know them. I don't get a sense of their personality. I don't get a sense of who they are. Um, so yeah, Belinda says that her students love Bitmoji. Yeah, Jessica, you can use it in Blackboard. And we're going to talk about a little bit about how you can do that. Forgive me, they're doing uh, lawn stuff outside my window. So we're going to go ahead and create a course banner in Canva. So if you want to follow along, um, make sure that you have a Canva account. But let's go to canva.com. And can everybody see my screen OK? OK. Once you're in Canva, what you'll do, um, this is to create a course banner for your class. So if you want to do this along with me, you definitely can. Um, so I'm going to go slow. <laughs> so. Uh, who still needs to create a Canva account? Go ahead and, and sound off in the chat. Okay, so Meryl's gonna, gonna do hers. It seems like most of you guys are ready. So Meryl, go ahead and uh, make your Canva account if you wish, um, but I'll kind of go slow and then you'll have a copy of this for later so you don't necessarily have to follow along right now. But if you are following along, it would be cool if you could download, I'll show you how to download your, your um, banners at the end and you can, oh, we can't share them in the chat, dang it, that sucks. Um, but anyway, so what you wanna do to create a course banner for your course is you want to select create a design and you want to select custom dimensions so for the width you're going to choose 1200 and this is going to be in pixels and then your height is going to be 150 pixels you will go ahead and click create new design so what's really cool about canva is when you create this template here of you know your course banner they give you a couple of templates uh, to choose from. So you could just check off one of these templates if you wanted to. So I'm, I'm going to kind of go through um, and see which ones I like. So hmm, maybe like this one. Okay. I don't like this font though. I wonder what class this would be for actually here. Actually, let me get rid of this. Um, so let me go ahead and show you how you can put in backgrounds and stuff like that. So uh, Canva is like a really kind of, it's like Photoshop light because it's drag and drop and it's not as intense as needing to learn Photoshop. Um, so what you would do is you would select background and let's say I'm teaching geology, right? You could do a search for geology or you can do a search for cave. Oh, that's really cool. So you can click this as your background and it'll automatically put it as your background. And then you can double click and you can move it up like this, you know, until it has kind of the slice that you're looking for. And then when it comes to text, all you have to do is add a heading. So I'll go ahead and select this add a heading. And what you can do is you can click on the, the spot here and hit shift. So click and hit shift and you can actually uh, make it bigger like that. So I'm going to bring this over and I'm going to say geology 101, right? So what's my problem with this? Why can't I just download this and put it in my class? What, what are you guys seeing as the problem uh, with this uh, course banner? Y'all are the graphic design experts now. 
I'll give you a chance to sound off in the chat. Contrast! <laughs> That's what Jessica says. Everybody's screaming contrast. So um, if I, okay, so contrast is going to be an issue, right? Um, so I need to change the color of the font. So I could do something like this, just change it to black and see what that does. Oh, that still might be a problem. Um, so I could also play with um, the colors maybe that are in the picture. So especially if I, you know, let's say I want, you know, a more marbled look for that. I can actually go here and maybe do a blue. Maybe that'll work. Oh no, we're still gonna have issues with contrast. Let me go to black and see if that helps a little bit more. So the contrast is a little better, but you know, nothing's ever perfect for me. I'm kind of a perfectionist. So you can kind of move things around and see. Okay, so that's pretty good. I might actually be able to change this the color of this font to white and see how that looks. Ooh, okay, never mind. We have to. So this is kind of the work of design, right? This is what we're doing <laughs> when it comes to, um, you know, designing things. You just have to kind of try things out and figure things out. Um, so Johansson says the white on light blue or try red or orange. That's a really good idea. Is that the opposite on the color wheel, Kihano? That's really red. Maybe do an orangish color. I mean, that technically works. Yeah, move the font to the right and it works with black font. Yeah, so this is kind of what you can do. You can kind of mess around with this. Um, I have a couple of different um, banners that I've done. Let me go ahead and bring those up for you. Oh, these were for banners that I did for um, my Blackboard Bootcamp. It's actually coming up in October. If you wanna participate, it'll be in the Learn Center. All you have to do is look for Blackboard Bootcamp and it, it starts the week of October 5th. October is fixing to be real busy for me. So what I did is I actually grabbed my Bitmoji and put it here. And so these were my, these were my uh, kind of banners for each of the course modules or folders. So I could take this you know, Bitmoji of me out and I could actually grab my Bitmoji using this extension and say I wanted to use a different picture of myself, like here I'm eating bacon. I can copy that image and bring it into Canva and just hit Control V, and there I am. So I'm eating bacon on day one of building your course, right? And then what's cool with Canva is you can actually undo, like just Control Z, and it'll take you back to the beginning. Um, I also do these uh, <laughs> these webinars for every month. Um, this is like my email banner. So these are the ones that I've made for. Uh, throughout November and December, I've just kind of changed the background and then added a bitmoji of myself. So, oh, Kiana says, it's a good boot camp. I had a great experience. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, if you want to share your, oh, well, I don't think we have the, the capacity to share your, um, your, ba your banner, uh, but let me go ahead and show you what it looks like when you add a banner to your course. So I'm actually going to change this because I want it to be black because I don't like this, this pukey orange color. So let's say that this is my course banner. What I want to do is I want to download it. So I'll hit download. PNG is going to be my type. I want to select page one uh, because that's the the graphic that I want. I'm going to hit download and it's going to download it probably to your desktop or maybe even to um, your your downloads or whatever. And once you're ready to add it to your course, all you have to do is go to your course at mytcc.edu and hopefully it'll let you in because it likes you. So once you're in there, you can go to your course. This is my development shell. And then you want to go to uh, course, or sorry, customization. You'll select teaching style. And then it will allow you to select an entry point for your course, and it will allow you to have a banner. So I'm going to browse my computer, and I'm going to find this banner. There it is next to my raccoon self. I'm going to open. I'm going to hit submit. Once I do, it'll say course style updated. And now when I hit start here, it's Geology 101. So you can do this as many times as you want. Say, 
you know, I did this and it's like, oh, that image is so pixelated. I want to find another one. You can change it and then you can add it to this using the same process. So thank you, Julia. I hope you make cool banners too. So yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much it. So congratulations. You have completed the webinar for today. Thank you so much for your patience and understanding. I know we got started a little late. Um, if you could do me a huge favor and click that link in the chat and uh, give me some feedback on this presentation so I can make more and make them better. Uh, also, um, it is going to be your attendance for today. So if you could go ahead and fill that out so I can verify the roster on Learn Center, that would be fantastic. And you are very welcome. This is my complete pleasure. I love sharing this information with you all and kind of giving you new tools for your tool belt. Um, teaching online isn't easy. It never was when I started doing it and definitely isn't now <laughs> once we got thrown into it. Um, so yeah, I'm here for you. If you ever need anything, just shoot me an email or a text. Um, and yeah, I look forward to sending you a copy of this video uh, later on in the week. So. <laughs>